So what's next on the agenda is a very interesting panel. Next panel is about women's sport. So first of all, a hearty welcome for, uh, to all our panelists. And it's great to uh, see you in person. I haven't met uh, you before on, on screen, yes. So uh, happy to do that. And uh, yeah, so moving on to our panel about women's sport. And a lot of referencing have happened over the uh, past few panels. And it's like building up towards a sort of finale. And so let's give them a grand finale here. Um, how things have changed, um, and all for the good one hopes. Uh, if we look at uh, women, and uh, from gender stereotypes of pre-decided gender roles, to um, uh, a place where in, in, the sco in the span of less than maybe month, month and a half, we'll be hosting one of the largest uh, women's sporting event uh, in India. Uh, if I go a little bit, a um, few months behind and look at uh, towards the end of middle, end of last year, um, um, sporting boards have taken the pages out of the right book. And now men and women are supposed to get equal pay for doing uh, the same kind of hard work on the sporting arena. And, and we are talking about cricket, right? Um, if we look at the popular culture, popular um, genre like Bollywood, some of the biggest blockbusters and grossers have been about women triumphing on the sporting arena, whether it's hockey, wrestling, um, boxing, so on and so forth. So there is an acceptance, there's a growing awareness, and this is what the story has been so far. Um, but what next? Oh. How, do I, how does one keep the momentum alive? What are the plans for the future? And uh, how do we encourage, nurture, and grow talent? Um, what are the structural changes? What are the infrastructural changes that are required? And I'm hoping we can delve into some of these. Um, you know, people talked about sponsorship, investments, et cetera. So we do realize funding becomes extremely important. And, uh, and funding is important both for uh, the sports that are played by men as well as women. And uh, the most popular sports that is cricket as well as the other sports. And I'm hoping you will be able to shed some light on some of these uh, topics. Uh, there is a critical role for all enablers and some of the stakeholders uh, representing them are both enablers and sponsor are here, uh, whether they're broadcasters, platform owners, data aggregators, media strategists, or corporates. And we must create a win-win situation for everyone. I mean, there's no point crying and saying, oh, you know, all money is cornered by men's cricket. We'll have to find ways of means of making it win-win for everybody here. And here we are talking about sponsors, rights holders, uh, federation, and uh, Puilela uh, Gopi Chansar in the morning talked about saying that let's not forget the entire spine of support, uh, the support system that goes in, and how do we enable coaches, uh, the support, how, how do we help them, those become important. And of course, most importantly, uh, the women sports person, the sports, uh, women sports, uh, women, uh, sports women. Um, I'm glad that today there's a very interesting mix of uh, people in the room uh, who can, we cannot, uh, we have 45 minutes in which I'm sure we cannot touch everything that I would have loved to talk about, but at least some of the crucial aspects we should be, be able to cover. And I want to start with uh, you, Yash. Uh, the grammar of most sports says, catch them young, okay? And in your case, I think your commitment, your journey with sports started rather early when you were in the engine, in engineering college in Pune. I heard that, you know, and we read about it, the fact that you were engaging during the two, uh, uh, 2017 Women's World Cup uh, where we just missed lifting the trophy. We did a damn good job. Women's, uh, the women, our women did a damn good job. You were engaging then and then from that to women's creek zone. That's a jump. That's a transition. So uh, what I want to ask you when you were uh, tweeting at that point in time to now um, and this year's, has the moment of change in women's cricket from the time we just missed lifting the trophy in England? 
to now? I think so. A lot has changed. Uh, in 2017, if we would have done this summit, I don't think so. We would have had this topic of women's sport. And uh, nearly every panel that we had since morning has been talking about women's sport, has been talking about women's cricket, has been talking about women's IPL. Mm -hmm. Um, so, of course, a lot has changed. That particular incident wherein uh, nobody expected India to be in the finals. They went to the finals, of course, lost by just nine runs. Um, that changed a lot of momentum. Uh, that uh, uh, put, put it uh, uh, for all the people that, yes, uh, women can also play. Women do play cricket. A lot of people didn't even know that women's cricket existed. So uh, that changed a lot of things and from there uh, to our women representing different franchise across the globe uh, to now having our own franchise competition which is now the second most valued uh, league in the world after the men's IPL only, uh, I think so a lot has changed. So uh, you are definitely a flag bearer for diversity, equity and inclusion because your foray has not just been limited to women's cricket. So from women's cricket zone, you've moved on to women's um, sports zone. Um, and my question to you is, is it a different ball game altogether, literally? Or there are similarity differences or, and some learning that you brought from your experience of running uh, women's cricket zone to uh, sports zone? Yes, experiences. I have brought in some experiences, definitely, but it's uh, still a completely different ball game because when it come when it came to women's cricket, because uh, cricket as a sport, everyone knew. Like ninety percent of our audience, any which way, watches cricket, so they know how the sport is played. Anything and everything to do with it. So it was easy for people to just say that okay, there's another gender which also plays the game. When it comes to women's sports, because uh, most of the people uh, that I know or in general as well, do not follow a lot of sports. So there it is more about educating people that this is a sport that that is played. So for example, had Bhavani Devi not come, uh, we wouldn't have known about fencing. So that's how it is. So it is about first educating uh, everyone about, okay, there is this sport that exists how it is played, then to create role models. When it comes to women's cricket, okay, that education part was not needed. It was only directly creating role models, revenues, broadcast, this, that. When it comes to sports zone, it's very different because there are multiples of sports. You need to teach them. Uh, and yeah, uh, so for India to become a sporting country, you will need to teach them young because the younger you are taught, uh, it's easier for people to pursue that particular spot. Thank you. And with that, I would like to move to uh, you, uh, Vishal. So uh, sports like life is all about perfect timing, right? And BCCI's decision to implement equal match fee policy for international appearances for men and women uh, cricketers is a welcome uh, uh, welcome step, I would say. But in this day and age, uh, this is something which is seen as being normal for any egalitarian employer. So my question to you, Vishal, when you started female cricket way back in 2016 uh, to now, I mean almost seven years, next month is going to be seven years for you. Um, what is the change you have seen in this journey? Uh, the way it is uh, perceived, uh, it's a similar question to what I had already asked uh, him, but I want, because you work with uh, young girls, you have an academy, I wanted you to give your perspective from that angle as well. Sure. Uh, thank you for that question, Moshmi. And uh, it's a very interesting question, I, and I get this question asked a lot. Uh, how has women's cricket changed over the years? And like, you know, Yash explained that there has been massive strides uh, apart from the equal pay policy, which was recently announced, and now a Viacom 18 women's IPL, a lot has happened, and it's out there on the internet, it's out there on the social media, out there on the TV, and being discussed uh, over and over again. But to understand what has changed, we also got to look at the past, and you know, the question is, what is the future of women's cricket? We also need to understand what has happened in the past. Because only then we'll be able to 
sort of correlate and uh, compare as to how far we have come from where we were in 2015, 2016. Now just to uh, quickly give you some analogy, and uh, I've had the fortune of talking to uh, the greats like Mithali Rajulan Goswami, and uh, they shared one of those anecdotes where they mentioned that you know back in the 90s and early 2000s, they had no facilities. So the basic facilities like travel and transport, uh, they used to travel unreserved in local uh, compartments. Uh, they used to stay in one dormitory, uh, and all the 15, 20 members accompanying uh, a tour would be uh, you know put in one dormitory, and they used to manage uh, their stays. The players were asked to carry their own linen, uh, carry their own floor mats, carry their own uh, 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 blankets uh, in order to uh, cover themselves. And that was the situation back then. To now, you know, a lot has happened. Now players, they get to travel business class. The, the players are made to stay in uh, uh, five stars. And uh, apart, from, apart from that, you know, women's cricket at the grassroots level has also uh, changed a lot. So what happened was, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, Yash also touched upon the fact that 2017 Women's World Cup, the ODI World Cup, we lost by nine runs. Uh, but uh, we did uh, win in a lot of aspects. And one of the aspects was that women's cricket became mainstream, uh, particularly in Indian context. Uh, what happened was, uh, by, the, by this uh, time, we had some decent amount of social media audience uh, because we started in 2016. So by 2017, this World Cup was happening. We had close to 10,000 uh, odd followers on our Instagram handle. And I remember the next day, and this World Cup final was on 23rd of July, 2017. And I remember 24th of July waking up uh, uh, with hundreds of DMs on our Instagram and everyone asking the same question, which was, how do I put my daughter to cricket? How can I put my daughter into professional circuit? And the daughters had this question. The girls had this question where can I start my professional journey from? Which is the best cricket academy? Which is the best cricket club that I can go and join? And unfortunately, I had no idea because it was a new beginning for me. Uh, I had all my life played uh, uh, cricket in a club where I used, I used to only see boys and there would hardly be any girls there. So I had no idea and I had no answer to this question. So it took me around two to three months to actually figure out uh, go meet some of the coaches and uh, ask for you know, some relevant answers to, uh, to their questions. Uh, at the end, I did not find any single academy, and that forced me to start my own cricket academy, which was exclusively for female cricketers. As Moshmi pointed out, uh, the name is Female Cricket Academy, and we have trained over 400 girls uh, in the last three years, uh, only in Mumbai alone. And thank you. And mind you, again, this is not an achievement. The, the other side to the story is that we have got over 4,000 inquiries coming in from tier two and tier three cities of the country, which unfortunately, at tier two and tier three, they do not have infrastructures. In Metro, you'll still find academies, you'll still find cricket clubs where there are boys training and the girls can be accommodated there. Uh, but in tier two, tier three, when you go there in rural parts of the country, they don't know where to go. Uh, they don't know what the pathway to the national setup or the pathway to domestic cricket looks like. And the, the parents are clueless because, again, uh, no awareness, no clarity of thoughts. Now, cut to 2023, six years, uh, massive strides. Now, women's IPL is being announced, and that opens up a lot of opportunities, opens up a lot of doors, because that ensures the girls will now be financially paid, whoever gets picked in the uh, IPL, of course. Uh, but again, I can go on and on. It's a seven-year-long journey. Uh, but I'll uh, leave the rest to the other panelists to, uh, to touch upon those uh, points. Seven years, long time, uh, a cricket academy for girls. Mm, a very curious question. I mean, you're saying it's in Mumbai, but you're attracting talent from tier two, tier three towns. Um, when you talk to girls um, who want to play cricket in cities, to when you talk to someone in a smaller town or a village, uh, what's the difference you find in their attitude, uh, in the way they approach the game, um, and how important uh, importance is it from a financial viability perspective? Again, so again, that's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, initially, when we began, the idea was to uh, take female cricket and this infrastructure to far corners of the country. But again, there were a lot of limitations and a lot of uh, uh, constraints that we had uh, because, again, it's a startup, so you got to 
uh, look across each and every aspect if you want to expand uh, academies and centers. Uh, coming back to your question, uh, Moshmi, uh, the, the very common thing or uh, the most important aspect that we have realized, uh, the girls in the metro cities, they have other avenues, they have, they have other opportunities and that is that also leads to a lot of distraction. Uh, the girls in tier two and tier three in rural, you now they have a point to prove. Firstly, the, the parents are still in that conservative mindset. Uh, they would not readily let their daughters to go out and explore some, some of the other sports. So they have to fight there. And that is the biggest hurdle, I guess, uh, especially in the tier two markets and tier three markets. If you can convince your parents, if you can convince your relatives, you, you have won 90% of the battle. After that, the majority of the task that is left is you go and perform and you, you know, make your up uh, way to the ladder. So in the uh, tier, uh, in the metro content, in the uh, metro uh, cities and metro context, there are ample of opportunities, there are ample of uh, challenges, and that also is uh, that that is also because there is a lot of competition out here. So, say in Mumbai, uh, you know, more than five lakh girls uh, play cricket in in Mumbai alone, but eventually. 15 or 20 makes it to the state side, right? And then you have under 19, under 23, and then seniors team. So say maximum 50 girls who gets to play at the elite level, who gets to play, uh, represent a certain state. But what about the other talents? What about the remaining talents? And they are left behind, and that is where the motivation eventually dies. That is exactly what we have seen at Female Cricket Academy also. The girls who joined us in the first batch, in the second batch, which was in 2017-18, they did not continue it further in 2019 batch. And we had hard time convincing the parents. And the, the, uh, the reason that the parents gave us was that we don't uh, think that the girl will, th that our daughter will eventually make a future in cricket. That's the reason why we are taking her out and we would rather put her in some academics or we would rather uh, ask her to uh, you know, take up some professional, which, uh, professional course which ensures that there is some stability, there's some uh, job opportunities that opens up. In uh, tier two, tier three markets, once, like I said, the initial hurdle is crossed, uh, you know, and because there's not uh, enough uh, competition out there, there's high chance that the girl can make it to the state side, and once she gets there, now there's ample of opportunities. Likely that she can get into the India sector and, uh, you know, could pro probably play, play for the country. So that is the stacking difference which we have seen uh, in tier two market and the metro markets. You raised some very, um, you know, critical, crucial um, points about why uh, women uh, drop out of sports, and we'll address this in uh, going further down the line. Um, I want to now come to you, Sai. 951 crores, 951 has become the most uh, quoted number. I think that one is for uh, in luck. Uh, so that's the five years rights which Viacom 18 has picked up, the media rights. Uh, I know it doesn't compare to the 8,200 crores um, which Sony spent to get the media rights for men's IPL in 20, um, no, 2008, yeah? But it's a beginning and like everybody uh, has been pointing out, it's the second highest uh, ever, it's a beginning. And uh, this question is to you as the brand custodian of a brand that has a legacy of advertising in men's cricket. How excited are you about the fact that um, IPL for women's cricket is, I don't want to call it WIPL, I think we do it injustice when we call it WIPL. I'll call it IPL for women. Um, how excited are you about it? And should the marketing fraternity be gung-ho about it? And what are the reasons you think they should be gung-ho about? So thank you so much. First of all, <clears throat> I'd like to congratulate Vishal for doing a stellar work in this space. So I think uh, working at a grassroots level is, is, I think, one of the best things that can happen. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, so coming back to the point, you know, how excited uh, uh, we are. So personally, if you ask me, I, I am super excited because uh, I, am, I follow cricket very closely. And uh, when I say cricket, it's cricket, not men's cricket or women's cricket. And uh, and I've been, uh, before IPL also, I've been very closely following uh, uh, Big Bash League uh, for women's. So, uh, like, you know, the kind of, uh, I, I'm not sure how, how, how many of you know, uh, uh, Harun Preet was, was in one of the seasons the, the top scorer. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, last season was a top scorer. And, you know, so that's, that's how the, uh, the evolution has already started. 
and I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's extremely heartening that it's come to India now. Uh, um, that, that's, that's on a personal uh, note. But uh, as a marketer, I think uh, um, you know, it's not the first time that uh, uh, we as a brand, Policy Bazaar as a brand, uh, will be thinking of investing in, uh, uh, in cricket, uh, women's cricket. Um, back in 2017, when I think we spoke about uh, 2017, you know, that's when the men's champions trophy was happening. And uh, just as a, uh, at that point of time, we thought, you know, uh, and the women's champions trophy was also happening at the same time, similar time. So we invested in the women's champions trophy as well. And, uh, and I clearly remember uh, uh, the Sunday was the final match. And uh, Monday morning when uh, I uh, come back to office, my business head had come and said, Ki, what did you guys do this Sunday? Why is the traffic so so much high? And we, and we could and, and and we went back and mapped the data with uh, what happened during the match time, and we could see some like huge spikes, uh, not as compared to uh, what a men's final during that time India Pakistan was a men's final uh, was there, but uh, at the cost at which we got that uh, uh, that tournament uh, and and the kind of results that we got, uh, it was uh, like. We couldn't even imagine. So since then, you know, um, like we evaluate any other uh, media property, we will evaluated uh, women's sports or women's cricket also uh, in the same lens, and uh, and, and and invested in it uh, uh, with conscious, uh, cautious efforts, uh, 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 thinking that you know, we want to um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, it you know, one one lens could be you no, know, we want to support women's sports and everything, but at the same time, you know, as a market, when you're having a marketer's hat, you need to evaluate the property on its merit. So, so you know, that, that one should not get carried away with that. So what that lens should also, and, and people who have worked with us, there are a lot of them in the room, they know that, you know, how uh, closely we, you know, uh, track the, uh, the numbers and everything. So, so one needs to have that uh, balance. And uh, coming back to uh, uh, IPL, I think uh, it's, it's going to open a, open doors for a lot of brands and uh, a lot of marketeers are going to uh, use this opportunity mainly because uh, a you know what when IPL for men happened, we could clearly see that you know it was not just men who were watching uh, cricket, and uh, it was the ratio of women had also increased, and uh, <clears throat> when we go back to our own data uh, when we advertised on IPL men's IPL. At that point in time, we could see, see this, uh, the share of uh, uh, women's generating uh, traffic on our side also had increased. So you know that was a very positive sign. So uh, so I think uh, cut to uh, women's IPL. I think it will bring in an absolutely new uh, range of uh, customers and absolutely new customers or new uh, uh, audience uh, to this platform. Uh, I think that will be super exciting. Uh, and it's, it'll be a great space and looking forward. So I think when it comes to cricket, it is still an easier answer and it's an easier question. I won't say easier, but uh, to that extent. Um, moving to other women's sport, other kinds of sports. For India, 2023 and 24 are very exciting. Uh, we have the Asian Games. Uh, we'll be having the Paris uh, Paris Olympics next year. If you look at the Indian contingent, it's likely to be a 50-50 in terms of gender ratio. And uh, if you look at the depth of talent, the women talent uh, will be very well representative, represented in sports like badminton, wrestling, um, hockey, uh, so on and so forth, um, uh, weight lef lifting. So my question to you is, we have been seeing um, the sports body supporting um, and clearly the broadcasters are putting the skin in the game. When it comes to other sports, when do you think um, the marketing fraternity will join the party? No, it's not that marketing fraternity has not joined the party. Uh, I think there are brands who are advertising on other uh, sports apart from cricket in India. At least the, uh, not at the same investment level because also you should, you should understand it's not that marketers want to spend more money on uh, a certain sport. It is what the, uh, how the, how it is priced, right? So we buy what is being sold to us. So uh, it's not that, you know, you, you can never um, kind of, you know, uh, you should never say that, you know, you're spending so much on cricket. But that is the price of cricket, men's cricket. You know, you can't do much about it, right? If I have to buy that, I have to uh, buy, uh, 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 take uh, 15 lakh rupees per spot. That's what, that's how you guys sell it, right? 
So uh, if, uh, and, and, and therefore the reach also comes accordingly. Uh, so I think uh, coming back to your point that, you know, uh, if you look at, so look, it's, it's very easy to say that, you know, uh, uh, cricket is where you uh, invest and you don't invest in women's cricket right, uh, women's other sports right now. But that's, tr at least for us, that's true for uh, any other men non-cricketing sport also. So our larger spend goes towards cricket and uh, other sports is much, much lower at the moment. So same thing is happening for uh, uh, women's uh, sports as well. But so, uh, yeah. so would you say it's an ROI question because because cricket corners also a lot of money. You, uh, your budgets are yeah. there and yeah, it, look, it, 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 cricket does corner a lot of money. But at the same time, you know, uh, uh, at least in the last two IPLs, at least we have not invested because we feel that you know it is it's becoming super expensive. Uh, it's super expensive and over a period of time, and also you know. Uh, as a brand, we have matured a lot, and it might not give us that kind of incremental reach for the monies that are being commanded. So therefore, so therefore, an opportunity like a, a women's IPL or any other non-cricketing women's sports, if rightly priced, why not? You have a new audience coming there. You have to rightly price. I've always said this: uh, non-cricket sports, if it rightly priced, why will a marketer not buy it? You know, it's it's absolutely it's 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 the decision is very very binary. It is if it is rightly priced, if it's going to give me an incremental audience, why will not buy it? I want new audience. So that's how you know as a marketer we think. Yeah. So coming to you, Yash, uh, I know we had discussed this, and you you had a point of view on this, and uh, I think it is also a question of consumer traction. Um, where where you have consumers, you will have brands moving there. So men's uh, cricket versus any other sports, uh, the uneven, uh, I won't even call it a balance, the uneven uh, tilt. Um, brands, is there a way in which you think that um, brands can benefit? Sai has put a point of view. Uh, do you have a point of view in this? Because I remember I, you wanted to talk about it. I agree this. to Sai's point uh, because uh, what he's put is very right that if you're, if you have rightly priced something and there's a new audience, why would the brand not come on board? Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think so. some uh, multiple panels happened just before this and uh, a lot of people also put it in this way that uh, right now is the time to invest in sports and not sponsor sports. So as brands, um, they, they can look it at in two ways, say an ROI based where in yes, you get these numbers, you get this new audience and you are basically putting your brand in front of them. And the second one could be that, uh, yes, I'm investing in this sport, I'm investing in this athlete or something like that. Uh, and that's how the growth model happens. So a straight example is Odisha uh, doing for hockey. A lot of uh, states or a lot of um, um, uh, brands could do it for one particular sport. And I think so, uh, as simple as that, any and every sport will grow. Uh, I also have one very straight, simple example that I've been seeing in cricket itself. So for example, uh, you go and see any men's cricket match. Right now there's an India-New Zealand game happening. On the ground itself, you'll find at least 50 brands advertising. So it's, it's a clutter. Uh, like after the match, I don't know how many brands uh, have that recall value that, yes, my brand was there. How many people recall actually uh, those kind of things happening? Whereas when I saw a women's cricket match with Vineet was mentioning last month, an India-Australia game in Mumbai, it was only MasterCard who had advertised and everyone that I spoke after the match or even before the match remembered that MasterCard was the advertiser and uh, they, have an, they had a an hashtag and everything and everyone remembered it. So I feel uh, it's more about quality also than quantity. So you have to also see it in multiple lens as possible and then, um, and I feel if if every brand starts supporting say one sport or any one state adopts a particular sport, that's the easier way to grow that particular sport. So when we say supporting, it means not supporting just as advertising because, but supporting a sport as putting your skin in the game, investing in the sport, infrastructure, etc. No, I think I, I kind of you know, agree with uh, what Yash just said. You know, um, I mean, a lot of at times, you know, marketing fraternity can be blamed for this. 
because you know a lot of times what we do is you know we do a lot of movement marketing when something happens at that point of time we just latch onto the like latch onto that movement and do movement marketing like recently this dominos episode where uh, the the someone uh, the, the woman who won the boxing championship uh, she said you know the one thing that i want to do is eat pizza and you know dominos went on and yeah, said that you know we'll give you lifetime free pizza yeah. so i think it's very post facto but what yash is trying to say is that you know can you um, be with a sportsman through the journey and build the brand accordingly i think somewhere you know uh, but a lot of sporting brands uh, have done that uh, it's not that they have not done it a lot of sporting brands have done it uh, uh, and i also like i would like it's not just marketer responsibility i also feel that you know uh, long long time back when sachin was just about becoming the star he was there was voltel who was backing him and positioning him to the brands so i think i i would love to see a lot of uh, this fraternity kind of you know positioning women sportsmen to the brands and say that no this is your brand this is because at times you know look we take decision when is something like this is brought to us yeah. you know so so when when that that needs to start happening i'll tell you very very give you a very small example uh, at least at least that thing is changed now few years back when the plan used to come to us uh, when the men's cricket plan used to come to us it used to be bundled with mm-hmm. women's yeah, women's yeah, cricket. cricket so i'm saying you know the chain needs to start at uh, your end also right agreed and uh, with that i would like to move to yanik my first question to you is okay fans are most important and fan court has been in, uh, democratizing this entire space of anything that doesn't get broadcasted get streamed so um, you have a lot of experience in this and you're foring uh, into this very exciting area of live streaming the league matches of the women's under 19 world cup uh, clearly walking the talk when it comes to promoting uh, uh, women's sport what are your expectations uh, in this area yanik for this series and what have you been doing in the past in fan code, fan code which has really been bringing uh, women's sports and women's cricket to the forefront yeah i think you know uh, when i started fan code about three and a half years back our prime reason for existence as a massive sports fan was that I felt that 95% of sport in this country was underserved. Uh, every broadcaster was running after this five or six events across the year, spending tons of money on it, and everything else was getting more coverage. So when you talk about women's sport, we talk about hockey, football, everything else. So we started saying that there's this massive core fan base. It's not in the hundreds of millions, it's in the tens of millions who have uh, strong affinity to sports, whether it's rugby, football, athletics, boxing, um, and various even other forms of cricket. So when we build the, the platform that we build, we say we'll use digital to get to these niche audiences and essentially build affinity around them. So women's cricket was something uh, which was extremely important. Women's sport across everything was extremely important. One little selfishly, uh, as a father to an eight-year-old uh, girl, I, I genuinely, you know, I see the difference. My son four years back and my daughter four years back, uh, the affinity to have role models in sport and the way those role models are promoted was so much easier for my son. And um, when I, and, the, and it's not that role models don't exist, it's just they weren't promoted, they weren't uh, actually presented to everyone or presented to girls the same way that uh, male role models are presented to boys. So women's sport is something that we took a very conscious effort in investing in. Last, I mean, last calendar year, we did 500 live streamed events, uh, five live stream matches on women's sport, including uh, domestic T20 leagues, including netball, including women's rugby. Uh, this year, we've already started with the under-19 um, uh, Women's World Cup, which has got tremendous traction across India. And you know, we've actually seen this, that it makes such, I mean, everyone's spoken about this. It's such an important giving exposure and investing in that exposure is so important. Uh, my daughter uh, loves cricket, or you know, loved cricket, and she liked Rishabh Pant, Virat Kohli. The first time she ever wanted to pick up a cricket bat and learn to play was when she saw Jemima Roderick's play in the 100. Right? It's, it's really important if you want to actually build women's sport about 20 years from now, we have to be investing now. I mean, the women's IPL, great, it'll add lots of value, but the actual value of all women's sport growing we have to look at it in a 10-year, 20-year plan. It can't be singular. So that's what we're trying to help in our little way. And you know, I, I do believe that with the amount of importance being given to it, that the continuous investment, when I mean, you said this, right, when you said about um, Viacom 18 paying whatever, 700 crores, 900 crores, or whatever it is, 
the reality is when Sony and DLF and all these sponsors put money on the IPL men's in 2008, it didn't exist. No one imagined that it would be so big, but they put money up front and they said, we are going to speak it to existence with the BCC. And some bets work. The Champions League of cricket, which people put money, failed. But it needs that level of investment, and we hope that all of our stakeholders, including us, will kind of help to that. So you, you're, so this anyway takes me to your next question. You're talking about importance of role model, importance of not just looking at a blip, but looking at a long horizon. It, this is something even uh, Gopich and Sir spoke in the morning, saying that you know you can't say I put money and you know show me results tomorrow. So some of the things that I would like to ask you, Yannick, if you can put shed some light on. Success in sports did, like you said, long-term vision and structural changes, infrastructure development. What are some of the things that we need and need urgently in our country? So I think this concept of urgent right, it has to be built now for 10 years from now. So when you talk about infrastructure and structure, it has to be said that what are we doing to actually build the sport 10 years from now? And it's a cross sport. It's not, I mean, if you look at the West, it's similar. Uh, collegiate, I mean, I think some Vineet spoke about it, collegiate uh, women's and girls' basketball is so popular in, in the U.S. and kind of grows through that. So I think a lot of what we, we need to be thinking in context of what can you do to make that game or those, comp those matches across, whether it's netball, basketball, uh, cricket, football, federations, rights holders, sponsor to be looking and saying, how do we make this the most compelling proposition to get more fans to the product? Whether it's creating superstars like Shafali Verma, Jemima Rodericks, or whether it's creating stories around those teams, or whether it's the, all that stuff, building that infrastructure and actually building that now for the next 10 years, I think that's something that's really, really important. And, you know, even, I mean, one of the things that we keep talking about is uh, it's extremely important that not just for uh, young boys, but more, maybe for more young girls, that training facilities have got certain safety protocols, Washrooms, I mean, someone was telling me the other day that uh, in, um, I think in a stadium in, uh, in Delhi, the women's washroom was closed. So there were boys and girls playing and they were taking turns using the boys' washroom. I mean, just basic stuff like that. I think if you can inculcate those habits, I think that'll one by one keep adding. It's not major, you don't have to like suddenly overnight invest like a thousand crores and change things. These small things, one after the other put together is going to actually move women's sport to the level where you know, all our kids, hopefully, our, our grandkids, whatever, will look at uh, sport the same way, gender neutral, saying that if I'm a boy or a girl, I want to play this because I believe that, you know, it's going to do so much for me. I have a chance to represent my country, my state, and make a living about it. So, uh, now my, oh, a common question that I want to pose to all of you. If there's just one thing, one wish list, something that you uh, would like to do, if we, our topic is women's sports, future of India's story. One thing that we need to change or something that you want to see continue, what would it be? I will start with uh, you, Yash, and then do a round. So I'm not sure uh, what would be that one thing because there are so many things that uh, need, so many things that need to come. I'll just put it in one, uh, if I have to put it in one thing, I'll just say that all the stakeholders that are there need to come together and uh, make sure that this grows. So just like Yannick mentioned that 2008, it was DLF, Sony, so many people came and that's why the IPL is what it is. If, yes, everyone can have a vision, but all the stakeholders, right from say agencies to sponsors to uh, media to uh, grassroots development to the players uh, and to the executionary organization, everybody needs to come sit on it and make a 10-year, 20-year play, plan, and that's how it is going to grow. Otherwise, yes, everyone doing it uh, uh, without there is a connection between the two, then nothing can grow because everyone will have a different vision of it and uh, it, it will just be like our five fingers which can, uh, which can just run in parallel but can never meet. So driving consensus with stakeholders, that's a very tall ask, but yeah, it's a wish list after all. What about you, Vishal? Uh, so just to add on to uh, what Yash uh, just said, you know, if I had to put out just one thing, again, uh, we are discussing all the positive that has happened, uh, which is good, which is fair. Uh, but again, there are several challenges still at the grassroots level because I work uh, very closely in the grassroots, so I understand that there are like layers of challenges. And 
I can you know, take another 10, 15 minutes in describing that, but I, I can see that the time is up. Uh, but quickly, there are physical barriers, there are like cultural barriers, uh, there are uh, financial barriers, which is like form the, the moat of the entire uh, problem chain. But uh, to answer your uh, question, if I had to pick just one thing, uh, you know, we, we all have uh, heard this saying, right? Uh, uh, if you educate a, a girl, uh, if you educate a boy, you are only educating a boy. But if you educate a girl, you are actually educating a society. Uh, very similar to that, if you invest in men's cricket, you are only investing in men's cricket. But if you are investing in women's cricket, a women cricketer, you are actually investing in the entire ecosystem because that eventually flows down to the family that ensures that there is a livelihood, that ensures that there is a financial stability. And there are like ample of examples, right, from Jemima Rodriguez to Poonam Raut, who are now not just handling their own expenses, but also looking after their families. So uh, if I had to mention just one thing, and to all the marketers, to all the uh, sponsors, to all the investors out there, please invest in women's cricket. That's the humble request. So very quickly, <laughs> Sai, what would be your one thing to change? Just start, start watching women's sports, guys. Okay. It's as simple as that. You, you have Just start numbers. watching it. I mean, <laughs> okay. Great. If you give us the eyeballs, everyone will invest. It's as simple as that. Start watching it, support it. Go to the stadium also to kind of you know watch it and cheer them, and uh, you know, and the rest everything will fall in place. Yannick. Yeah, I, I, I think every single parent has to get their daughter playing sport. Every Love single it. parent. Like if you do that, right, then you've already, I think, made a big difference. In Thank you. I know we have took a lot of time, but if there's any one question we could take from the audience. I think we have our next panel waiting, so we'll have to limit the questions. I'm one. so sorry. Do we have uh, a question? Let's take one. So we have uh, a question coming from the back. We will just circulate the microphone to you. And I'm sorry to be the devil's advocate, but I have to keep time. Sorry. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. Okay. Hello. OK, I'm Harish Vijayan from Times Group. Uh, I just wanted to ask to panel, just like how you said that, it's just that ev if everybody starts watching, then we can actually promote the sport. But if you see sports in general, cricket, basketball, anything for that matter, majority men's cricket is followed by men. So do, do you think that it's like if women started supporting women's sport, then equally uh, it can gather the audience that it should, which solves uh, the 90% of problem, which is the economy. I think it's a wrong notion. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Men doesn't, don't, I think that I know a lot of women who, like my, my mother is the biggest supporter of uh, men's cricket. She, from uh, Gundapa Vishnu days to even Virat Kohli now, so she's been supporting men's sports. And, and I know a lot of men who, like I have a WhatsApp group where, you know, we follow uh, the Big Bash, women's Big Bash League. So it's not that. I'm saying, you know, let's not say that men support men, women support women. It's everyone needs to kind of come together and look, if you enjoy a sport, you just watch it, like irrespective of, uh, I love cricket, I just watch a, a men's uh, cricket or a women's cricket. If I love hockey, I'll watch any of it. Lawn tennis, th there is no demarcation between uh, men's, apart from the fact that, you know, it's five sets and three sets, there is no other uh, demarcation, right? So, you know, people have fan following. Look, I'm just, when I say watch sports, I'm saying, you know, watch sports for level of, you become fans. You know, you create fans out of it, yeah. So that's how, that's how the entire, uh, the sporting uh, ecosystem will grow. And, and the notion is very wrong. It's not like men only watch men's yeah. cricket or anything. It's still 65% men watch men's cricket and 35% women who watch men's cricket. So sure. um, I think so. the same audience also needs to watch other sports. And of course, you need to also create a new audience to watch any sport. It's men, women, it's cricket, hockey, uh, basketball, any sport for that matter. Very well said. Uh, thank you very much. Thank, big thank you to everybody on the panel. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. <laughs> Women's sports, what's the future? We had deep dived into this topic and had some great insights. Uh, we would like to invite uh, Hugh Gillum on stage to join us to give away a token of appreciation to all of our esteemed panelists and our session chair for this uh, session. Ladies and gentlemen, we uh, talked about the scope and the future for women's sport in the country. And uh, in, a, in the last decade, decade and a half, things have changed. Women's sports, please, uh, we can start from either left or right.
Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. Thank you for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts with us this evening.